Okay, so in this video, what I want to show you is, uh, or try to explain to you uh, with, with my uh, skull model uh, and explain to you the, the fascia uh, in this area and how it relates to the tongue and neck and, and becomes more continuous with the rest of the body. And so what we're going to do, we're going to look underneath the skull here. And first we're going to look at the uh, pharyngeal fascial attachment. So that pharyngeal fascia attaches onto the uh, medial pterygoid uh, closer to the um, to the base. So not all, not not the whole medial pterygoid, just uh, closer to the medial pterygoid as it's projecting out from the sphenoid bone. It then continues on into this, attaches onto the petrous portion here of the uh, of the brown bone here, which is the uh, temporal bone, and then it continues along this blue bone just in front of these condyles uh, condyles here and here and so that is where the pharyngeal fascia is attaching to now what I want to try to do is I'm going to use my fancy toilet paper uh, roll demonstration to try to explain what is happening uh, here a little bit more 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 closely so here we have this tube and so this is going to represent the the pharynx and so we have this uh, pb that stands for fringo basal or fascia that lines the inner part of the tube and then we have the bp that stands for the buccopharyngeal fascia that lines the outer portion of the tube and then here on the sides you see these little outward projections this is about where the the hyoid bone would would potentially be in the back, it's not accurate, but I drew this line along here. This is where the uh, the pharyngeal constrictors, they come back and meet in a line posteriorly in the back. So uh, what is happening here is we have this, this incomplete tube and around here, it would probably start turning into the esophagus, but uh, we have this incomplete tube uh, part of that is because where it attaches uh, onto here, it would attach somewhat uh, like like this, and so uh, it has to be open for there a place for, for food and air to come into into the in, in, into the oral pharynx. Uh, so this pharyngeal basal or fascia that is that is here also projects, continues and projects out into the nasal cavity and into the oral cavity and becomes continuous through the palatoglossus with the tongue. And then, uh, and, and then we've got this uh, pretracheal fascia that is also going to uh, attach onto the hyoid bone. And then that's also going to become continuous with the tongue. And it's all part of the potentially could be part of the visceral fascial layer that we're talking about. So then in the in the front here, when when you swallow, the food would go down this this tube. Uh, the hyoid is up here it's, and it's got attachments from the middle pharyngeal constrictor, but it's still a little bit open bit below here because air also has to go into the trachea, which would come more forward. Uh, to the esophagus and uh, and then go into the and then go down in, into the lungs from there. So I hope that's some of this is starting to make sense. So the the fascia surrounding the trachea, uh, which is sitting in front, this would be the pretracheal visceral fascia, also attaches onto the buccopharyngeal fascia. Now we we're looking at this like a cylinder. But there would be another cylinder in the back sur surrounding the um, vertebrae and that also ends up blending into the buccopharyngeal fascia in the back so we've got in the we've got buck like the uh, pre or pretracheal fascia attaching to the buccopharyngeal fascia in the front and then in the back we have the prevertebral fascia attaching onto there now it's all going to become, uh, it's all, it's all going to blend into each other. Now, coming 
back to this, we've got fascial layers that we've got dura, uh, according to some books, that is coming out externally, through, that comes externally out through the, through the sutures. We look, we we think about that here, but they're also talking about it uh, coming out through the sutures here, and then continuing on with attack becoming continuous with the pharyngeal basal or fascia. So we've got we've got uh, attachments that way. Now we've got the, the hyoid bone that sits under here. It's got the pretracheal fascia attached to it that is going up and attaching to the cranial base. We've been talking about that. Then there's also the uh, to the attached to the hyoid bone would be the investing layer that is the the outermost layer that would surround your whole neck like a like a, a, a cylinder and that is the most superficial layer and that also comes up and attaches to the jaw and then comes up and uh, through the masseteric fascia and epicranial fascia and blends into that now the epicranial fascia also is attaching to dura the dura matter as, it, as it's coming out externally through the sutures so uh, the investing layer from the neck and the, and the hyoid is coming up and it is attaching onto the sutures here. Um, more also, most likely, what is what I think is happening is that when we come up, when this outer layer of fascia out through here uh, is also going to uh, blend and become continuous with that pharyngeal uh, or pharyngobasilar fascia that's flaring into the nasal cavity and oral cavity. Uh, and then so that investing layer is then becoming continuous with the outermost, more superficial layer that is then continuing up to the, to the fascia or to the dura mater. So I hope that that at least makes sense. Down below here, uh, at, from the hyoid down, we have the pretracheal fascia that is enveloping the uh, trachea, esophagus, uh, the trachea, esophagus, and larynx, and, uh, and the organs here in the neck, and then it's also binding to this other layer, the investing layer, the more superficial layer here, and then as they come down, they split apart, the more superficial layer comes to the front of the chest, whereas the deeper layer goes into the, into the chest cavity and become, in, envelops your organs, uh, be, Envelop, becomes part of the fibrous pericardium, envelops your lungs, a lot of the, the mediastinal structures in the chest, and, um, and, and so the deep fascia, the, the tube in the back that is also attaching to the, uh, that is surrounding the vertebrae is also coming out and uh, going into the back of the rib cage. It, it's forming part of the pleural dome and then is forming the endothoracic fascia and there's also going to have some visceral components to it that go all the way down. So anyway, I hope that uh, has at least made some sense uh, in terms of, of now seeing it and in, in, in how it might work. So uh, I hope this goes well with the material that we covered earlier here in the continuous tongue. And then uh, later on, uh, now I can talk about tongue ties and lip ties and even potentially buckle ties and we can start to look at what effect they might have on this whole fascial system but first we have to understand the normal system before we go from there okay so i hope you've enjoyed this this lecture if you want to learn more go to the continuous and uh, you can learn about this and a lot of more in-depth things about uh, how the tongue is related to the head, the rest of the body, how it affects craniofacial development and overall structure in the body. Uh, and I am putting together this amazing course for, for people. So uh, feel free to check it out, continuoustongue.com. And uh, I, will, I will be seeing you another time, I hope.